After having collected your organoids and washed them with PBS, transfer them to a tube containing a solution of 4% paraformaldehyde using a wide bore pipette. This should be done under a chemical hood. Organoids can be incubated for one hour at room temperature or overnight at four degrees Celsius. Once the samples are fixed, remove the paraformaldehyde solution. Then, wash the organoids with PBS for 15 minutes. Repeat the wash step twice. Then, transfer the organoids to a solution of 20% sucrose in PBS and incubate overnight at four degrees Celsius. As we can see, the organoids are going to float at first. This is normal. The next day, the organoids should have sunk to the bottom of the tube. Using a wide bore pipette, transfer the organoids to a plastic mold one by one. When doing this, drop as little liquid as possible into the mold. Then, remove as much of the liquid as you can. To do this, you can use a disposable wipe with the corners folded to form a fine tip. If needed, the organoids can be moved very delicately. Excessive manipulation of the tissue will result in cracks. Slowly pour OCT in the mold until the organoids are completely covered. If bubbles are present, they should be removed. A pipette tip can be used to push them out. Pour liquid nitrogen in a styrofoam box containing a raised grid. Make sure to use the appropriate protection equipment when working with liquid nitrogen. The mold should be laying flat and it should be in contact with the gaseous phase of the nitrogen, but not the liquid one. After a few minutes, the block should be frozen and should be completely white. Before sectioning, place the block in the cryostat for 30 minutes to equilibrate the temperature. Remove the block from the mold, always keeping track of the orientation. To help with this, mark the bottom side of the block by cutting an edge prior to removal, or make a mark using a permanent marker. Record the orientation of the mark in your lab notebook for further reference when analyzing the sections. Evenly cover the surface of the block that will be in contact with the blade with a thin layer of OCT. Press it down on the cooled storage area to make it flat. Remove it when the OCT has solidified. Trim with a razor blade to have straight edges. Should the orientation of the block matter, be sure to keep track of it at this stage. Apply a sufficient enough amount of OCT to the chuck, the sample holder, to make the base a little larger than the block area. Make sure the block is properly attached to the chuck. Insert the chuck on the specimen head and rotate it so that the block edges are aligned to the head. Bring the blade closer to the block and adjust the vertical horizontal alignment to the blade. Approach the block until one part of it touches the blade. If any part of it touches the blade, release the headlock lever and adjust alignment so that the block no longer touches the blade. Approach the block further until it touches the blade again and repeat the previous steps. When the only part that touches the blade is the center of the block, or if there is no position where no part of the block touches the blade, then the alignment is complete. Retract the blade for the next step. Use the cryostat trim function to shave off excessive OCT. When samples start to become visible on the surface of the block, set the cutting thickness to the desired value and continue trimming until samples begin to be cut. Cut sections while preventing their rolling. Use a slide kept at room temperature to pick up sections using the thaw mounting method. Repeat this step until enough slides have been produced. Let sections air dry at room temperature between 30 minutes to 2 hours. 
use the slides for the desired purpose or store them at negative 20 degrees Celsius. This is an example of quality control done on sections under the microscope. The entire section is not visible and there are many holes within the sections. These sections did not pass the quality control test. The sections in this image show that the entire section is visible. However, the section on the left has a crack, which is not ideal. Once your cryo sections are done, you can stain them with different antibodies to visualize your proteins of interest. Here we have 50-day-old human midbrain organoids of synuclein triplication lines, control lines, and synuclein knockouts stained for neurons, astrocytes, and nuclei. For more technical details involved in the process of cryosectioning, please visit this link to our data portal to read the written protocol for cryosectioning fixed and frozen tissue.